Hello and welcome back to the Captain's Quadrant. I'm Captain Joe Dove and we are back in section 31 and a half as we have questions. Today joining us for the first time in the Captain's Quadrant, Dr. Steven Novick. Thank you so much for joining us. You're the only person that has been with all five captains. So this is going to be an exciting chat and I'm so grateful that you're joining us. How are you, doctor? I'm great. Thanks uh, for having me on the show. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have been the luckiest person to have worked with all five captains. Can you tell us um, how you ended up working with all five of the captains? Well, back when Deep Space Nine was on, uh, I guess that's uh, the late 90s, maybe 97, uh, I've, I've been a dentist for 40 years. And at that time, I'd been a dentist about 10 years. And of course, I've been a Star Trek fan ever since I was a kid. I mean, a real fan, oh, God. Um, like you, you know. Yeah. You're, you're a fan. <laughs> and um, as I was starting to do better in my dental practice, I was doing some charity work, and this charity called the Starbright Foundation, which uh, helps uh, sick children, kind of like a Make a Wish type of thing. That's nice. Uh, had this um, charity auction. And the prize was to be on Deep Space Nine. Oh. And so um, I was bidding for it. It was funny, I was bidding for it online and um, my internet connection went out. Oh. And it turned out though, I had the winning bid. So they called me and uh, I traveled out to California to be in an episode of Deep Space Nine and made all the arrangements. And um, so that's kind of how it started. And so the first episode I ever did, uh, Avery Brooks was the captain. It was in season seven. It was an episode called Penumbra. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the big war was going on. And they had me come in. And um, the day before, they had me come in and they cut my hair and uh, measured me for my costume. and. Um, I had my friend with me. The joke was they were going to make me an admiral. My friend said they were going to make me a rear admiral. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, uh, they made me like a lieutenant commander or something. And I was on the space station. And the funny thing is I go on next day. I get there super early because I had a call for makeup and they were going to put this sideburns on the William Shatner sideburns. I was so excited. And uh, but first we sort of went on to the set and there was no lighting and it was the space station. And um, it, it was just amazing, you know, as a fan of watching Star Trek and just to actually see this and um, I see the promenade. So I start to go up the spiral stairs. And as I reach for the railing, a piece of the promenade came off in my hand. Oh, no. <laughs> and that was my first kind of experience with Hollywood where it, it's not a space station. You know, no. It's it's <laughs> and, just... uh, I managed to get the piece back in. And uh, just, and then, you know, they came and they lit everything up and, uh, you know, it was sort of, like I said, like a fan's dream come true. I mean, I never imagined uh, I would ever be in an episode of Star Trek. And um, it was a great experience. And uh, after that, I kind of got the acting bug. So I applied and I got into Lee Strasberg Theater Institute in the city. Oh, nice. And I did a year of acting school uh, while I was still a dentist. Uh, but the long and the short of it was I started getting more and more into the Star Trek fandom and I started going to conventions and I had made some good friends when I was on Deep Space Nine. And so uh, I, I ended up the assistant director, people that I knew there, I ended up coming back and doing an episode of Voyager and then later um, an episode of Enterprise. And um, Somewhere in the middle there, I guess I had met William Shatner at a convention and he was having a lot of problems with his teeth. So oh. when he heard I was in the show and I was a dentist, he sort of started calling me. Uh, and, Doug, Steven, uh, my teeth, I need you now. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. And so um, he asked me to be on Boston Legal, which he was oh. doing at the time. And I actually told him no, because I was very busy. And I said, but if you're in Star Trek, I would do that. Um, there's, I have stories behind that, but I ended up being on Boston legal. So that's how I ended up working with William Shatner. It counts. And then 
Yeah, it, it does count. Yeah, I'm not old enough to be in the original episode. No, no. no. <laughs> and then uh, Patrick Stewart, um, I had gone to do Star Trek Nemesis. And um, that also, there's a lot of crazy stories around that because when I got there, they didn't have my name down as uh, Atmosphere. It turned out what had happened was that the day before when they got back to shooting during the weekend, somebody had stolen the captain's chair off the bridge oh, of man. the Enterprise. Wow. And so they had to redo all the uh, things they were going to film. So what I was going to do was take it out. And um, but I still, you know, I still was there and Patrick Stewart uh felt really bad about the whole thing because I came all the way out there to do it. And uh, he was really great. And I got to the whole cast ended up filming. Uh, it was the last time they actually filmed together as a cast. Right. Uh, and uh, was that day. Oh, wow. And I got to meet everyone. And Patrick Stewart took me to lunch. And it, it, that was also a great experience. So yeah. that's kind of how I ended up being with all five captains. That's amazing. I have a couple of pictures that I want to share. Um, and you have an, a nice backstory about why these pictures look as they were done in an age before high def iPhones. <laughs> so here's the Patrick Stewart one. That's yeah, amazing. Well, the suspenders. That's uh, that's outside his trailer on the Paramount set. He he was he was fabulous. He he took me into his took me to lunch. Took me oh, into wow. his trailer. Just hung out with me. Wow, he, he he felt so bad yeah. <laughs> about you know what had happened, but that's his actual Star Trek uniform, as you can see. He's got the pink. right. He's going to say the jacket is the suspenders. Yeah, right. That's I look like that because they had taken off whatever makeup or whatever I had on. So, I oh wow. Oh. Um, and then the one with this is to me awesome because I would always wanted to meet Avery Brooks, and here you are oh. as you were saying, Lieutenant uh, Commander there with. Captain Cisco. Yeah, he was wow. Just such a I mean, he, he was an imposing figure to meet. Um, but he knew that was the first time I was ever doing anything. And obviously you could see that's on the set. Yeah. And uh, it was funny, I'm wearing my glasses in that picture, and he's like, Be careful when you take those glasses off. You don't want to mess up the sideburns. Oh. And uh, he he actually, uh, I was there for a couple of days and he gave me some acting lessons. He's like, let me, oh. let me show you some things. And he, uh, if you watch the episode P of Penumbra, there are some mm -hmm. scenes where he's at his desk and he had me standing just off camera so that I could see how he did his process. He he was unbelievably nice. Wow. So you got Fabulous acting lessons guy. on top of I got acting you know, lessons when on, I was there too. Oh man. You live the dream. Live the dream. And and speaking of living the dreams, you said you were on Voyager. And I mm -hmm. I love this one because Jerry Ryan was an absolute uh gem when I was at that age in the 90s. And yeah. here you are in the robe, where she's in the robe, and you are a smiling man. <laughs> I'm a deer in the headlights because yeah. I mean it's <laughs> Jerry Ryan and actually that grainy thing behind us it's not mm -hmm. it, it, um you can see the stars there so right. you know a lot of the stars that you see outside the window of the ship are not special effects they're these screens that they oh. put backlighting behind and somebody's uh I can't see the name on that chair there but that's somebody's uh chair you know one of the actors chairs but the reason Jerry Ryan was wearing the, the robe, as you could see, she's in her complete seven of nine outfit. Mm -hmm. We had a scene together. Uh, she has her script in her hand because they were always updating the pages and she had uh -huh. to learn a lot of her lines like right on the spot. She was amazing. Right. But the costume was so tight and revealing and sexy mm -hmm. that she would put the robe on in between uh, in between shots. Wow. Because, it, you know, she. You know, she felt weird. Otherwise, yeah. she was sort of all out there, you know. Right. So right. that's a very rare photo, and she was super, super nice. To, uh, she she uh, actually wanted to take the photo. She asked me if I wanted to take the photo. It was really, oh, really nice. Awesome. But that's kind of why she's wearing the robe in that uh, photo. Yeah. So you got to play several aliens. Uh, I've noticed. Um, is there a favorite <laughs> that you? Is the less makeup the better, or did you not? Did you not mind the makeup process? Did you have a favorite alien? You know, as a fan and being well, what happened was initially I, I became friendly with Michael Westmore. 
Mm. And uh, the one picture you had that I think I sent you, I'm wearing a Herogen helmet. Yep. That's the, the Herogen. Yeah. And Michael Westmore, um, we just became super friendly over the years that I was there. And so by the time I got to Enterprise, he was like, you know, we don't want people recognizing you. You've been on the show before and Enterprise is a prequel. Mm -hmm. So we don't want some fan to say, hey, here's uh, what's this guy doing here or whatever so oh. um the alien that they made me on enterprise that uh, the two days and two nights he really kind of went way out of his way on that one um the head that i'm wearing actually was the head worn not the hair but the forehead uh jeffrey coombs wore that in oh. the episode of voyager the with the rock sunkatse yeah and so um he also had he didn't do the makeup himself but he actually had and this was amazing uh jake garber who was uh i think he had been nominated for an oscar on makeup at that time yeah that's the full head of hair yeah and uh, jake garber went on he he like does walking dead now he's doing the new fallout show now wow. he's nominated he's won so many emmys and and whatnot but anyway jake garber did my makeup for that because uh michael westmore wanted me to have better experience but that took a, a couple of hours at least that particular one um when i was on voyager i almost was a borg they started me on some borg stuff but uh then they changed their mind but mm -hmm. um but i would say the enterprise one was the most fun doing that and uh michael westmore at the end of the shoot actually gave me the headpiece oh nice uh, what he said he asked he went and got permission yeah and he gave that to me yeah i, so I, heard, was, I heard rumors that uh one of the producers was at the end of the shoot was like, give me your comm badges, give me your comm badges. So it's amazing yeah. that you get to keep that. That's awesome. Well, actually, yeah. In fact, uh, I have oh, one of my comm wow. badges too. Oh, Wait, Cause amazing. Deep Space Nine was ending that season. And uh, you know, it's funny because, you know, not that I would have done anything, but they're very like, don't steal anything, whatever. And you know, on the back of the comm badge, it's, it's actually made from wood. They're not. Oh, wow. Oh, they do and, a great job. Uh, I always thought they were metal. Yeah. yeah. And you could see the number. And at the end of at this, yeah. I think it's 21 or something. And so right. what they would do is they would, when you turn, when you took something, they marked it down. When you gave it back, they marked it down. So they kept track of all of that stuff. So you had to get permission or I, I never asked for anything, but, um, you know, the people, I just started to get to know people and they were just really nice. So I have a couple of souvenirs from, from my days in Star Trek. You got some really cool souvenirs, and that's custom made. So you can just do Halloween on your own. Just put it on and get ready to <laughs> rock and roll. <laughs> yes. I'm wearing it right now. There you go. <laughs> um, so you have a lot of these photos in your uh, your office, your dentistry office, if I'm not mistaken. Do a lot of uh, a lot of your clients recognize it, a lot of trekkies come in oh my god and they get freak out oh my god you got oh, yeah. yes and over the years it happened a lot sometimes if they were a person who wasn't a fan they might think i just dressed up <laughs> so what i started to do was i started sending out announcements you know i'm going to be in the episode and so when people oh. would come in i would say no this is me from this episode or that episode or whatever and of course i've done a lot of other shows and movies and, and whatnot too so i had a lot of other pictures up in my office at the time um i'm retired now so i don't have the dental office anymore right. but um but i did name my dental office celebrity dental because uh -huh. uh, as a result of, of that and it was again another kind of funny story was when i was at deep space nine um i was hanging out with uh michael dorn Mm -hmm. uh, I think I sent you the picture where he's drinking some coffee or something. And right. uh, I wasn't a customer or anything at that time. And he came up to me and he's like, are you the dentist from Trekkies? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I, I, I hadn't seen it at that time. And apparently in Trekkies, there's a dentist uh, that um, made his office into like a starship. And he would work on patients while wearing 
oh wow starfleet uniform and this was again back in the 90s so if you've yeah. never seen the trekkies it's a great documentary i think yeah no i've seen that and uh so i said no i'm not that dentist and of course mm -hmm. when i got home i went and looked it up though i was in trekkies too they did ask me to come and do a little something for that but, very cool uh but michael dorm was funny he's like he goes okay well, good because otherwise i wouldn't talk to you if you were. oh wow <laughs> <laughs> because, because that's a little bit too much yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> he was God. also so he was great yeah so, yeah so you also said that you've gone to a few conventions um I, i'd love for you to share your stories about uh i believe it was stlv 40. yeah Coffee. um yeah. i i love uh i love creation i mean i think what those guys do um and i mean i love the long island convention i think what you guys do too is great it's you know it's there's so much fun and you just with everybody there is just having a great time and you're with people that are enjoying what you're enjoying and i i had gone to star trek conventions in the 70s you know when they first when i was in college or whatever in mm -hmm. san francisco one came to my college uh, but eventually those guys created the creation conventions and when i started doing the show I would have these photos and I would bring them. I, I said, I want to go to conventions and have the actor that I'm with sign the photo because mm -hmm. I would have them printed up. So that led to me going to the conventions. And then it, I turned out I had known uh, Gary uh, and Adam from growing up in New York uh, and we were at some of the early conventions. And so I started going and over time uh, when they found that I was in the show, they, asked me to come and speak at the 40th anniversary Star Trek convention in Las Vegas, which uh, they actually put me in the program as a guest. And uh, I thought they were going to just have me speak in like the little B track room. But when I got there, I had made a, a little uh, DVD that had clips from all my different episodes. It's a it sizzle new, reel, they call it. Sizzle reel. Yeah. 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 And I went ahead and, and I had that made and I brought it. And when I got there, I couldn't believe it was like a 10,000 seat room wow. in the Hilton hotel. I was like, then I got a little bit nervous and um, they put me in the program to go on after Kate Mulgrew, who I knew from doing Voyager. And, and so when I was there, I was backstage and Kate Mulgrew came up to me and she says, you know, Stephen, why are you so nervous? Cause she could see I was walking up and down. Oh, wow. And I said, there's 10,000 people out there. I, I go, no one's going to even want to ask me questions. I mean, I'm, I'm not you. And she and I said, but, you know, the good news is after you do your talk, everybody's probably going to walk <laughs> out and go to, the, you know, buy things. And, you know, yeah. there probably will be a smaller group there. And she said, no, actually, I'm signing autographs in the back of the room and people have <laughs> to stay in their seats and they got to get called row by row. So you're going to have all 10,000 people listening oh, to your wow. talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, god which which was right and um and it was so great and i got up and i uh you know showed the clips and i talked about different things and uh i had i had a lot of video footage of uh, like wardrobe and where they keep the props and uh i had been given uh, one of the ad's that i was friend with david trotty he um had taken me through the corridors of the enterprise and where the borg where he showed me the you know on the next generation said all different things and uh the fans at the convention loved it and uh i i you know i got a lot of questions yeah and uh it, i didn't sign autographs or anything hmm. but it, it was it was a great experience again as a star trek fan you know people were fascinated by yeah i mean that's kind of like a dream kind of like to to For be sure. in your favorite show right you know so I just told people, you know, and, and uh, you know, I think it was on day two or something. I, I can't remember exactly, but uh, everybody was coming up to me the whole convention. And I was just there enjoying the convention just like everybody else. So, wow. You know, after that. So it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. The um, there's a picture I'm going to bring up and it's my favorite power couple in Deep Space Nine at the time. Um, I, I believe they were still together. Maybe you know. And that is. Alexander Siddig and uh, Nana Vista mm -hmm. and uh, Major Kira and Dr. Julian Bashir. Yeah. I, that's a great picture. Oh, it's such a good picture. I was like, oh, when I saw that, I actually got to meet him in um, a convention in Philadelphia. 
and she was also there. And they, they oh wow, yeah, and they just everything just worked out so well, and it was such oh, a great nice. experience. Were, were you? Did you have a fun time hanging out with them and, and filming on Deep Space Nine? Oh my God! I mean, again, it was like I, I, you know, I I was trying to be professional, but I right. mean, I'm a, such a big fan, and you can see again, I'm like a deer in the headlights in that picture. <laughs> like I'm so happy. Like I'm I'm like yeah, who gets to take a picture with your favorite actors in their costumes? You right, know, like right on the set. Yeah, and they couldn't have been nicer. And um, they they again, you know, just super nice. But it um. And our visitor was about to get ready to do a scene. And I'd already been there for a while shooting at Quark's bar for the episode. And she said, you know, I'd like Steven to be in this scene with me. Oh, wow. And uh, I was like, okay. So they, they said, okay, they were really nice about it. And what it is, it's uh, at kind of at the beginning of the episode, if you watch the episode Penumbra, where um, Dax is in the replimat she's they're sitting at a table talking and you could sort of see me in the background right over her shoulder mm. and i'm talking with kira major kira but you can't see kira now initially she was just going to be standing back there and when it was her cue she was going to walk on mm -hmm. but she made it so that i would be in the scene oh that's amazing so we had to literally have this conversation probably for about 30, 40 minutes with the two of us, because they do the scene over and over and over again before they move the camera. And she was, you know, asking me about being a dentist and, you know, and asking me, you know, she was, it was like, we were just having a conversation, you know, yeah, asked her yeah. how she was doing, but it's like, that's how it is filming. You're doing the scene. So then you see, I kind of walk first and I go behind uh, Dax at the table and then Kira comes into the scene and she actually has lines and, and does mm -hmm. the scene. So it, it just was, it was like a dream. You know, it's like everybody wanted to make sure I had this great experience while I was there. They just went out of their way because they're working. Right. And they're working for a lot of hours. Yeah. Uh, but they couldn't have been nicer. They knew I, I was a fan of the show as well. So they just wanted to make sure everything was perfect for me. That's great. You know, so That's that was great. really great. I'm sure it's one of those things and you can elaborate on it more. Is it when you're filming, even though it's, it takes hours to do this, it probably felt like minutes because you're just having such a great time. Did the, the time just not appear as long uh, as elongated as, as you would assume? Oh, not to me. And that, yeah. I mean, cause this was all new to me because it, it's, you know, when you see two people having a conversation on screen and you may know this and maybe a lot of people don't, but what happens is the two people are having the conversation and they set the cameras up to face just one of the people mm -hmm. and all the lighting is behind. You can't see it obviously in the shot. And then they are filming the entire conversation, but they're only filming one of the two people. Then when they get all that they want there, which could take 30 minutes to set up the lighting, 30 minutes for to get three or four takes, then they move all the lighting and everything to the opposite side and then they focus on the second person and then oh, they wow. cut those two things in so doing one scene like that could take it two hours yeah. just for a few minute conversation yeah and um and of course they don't film the scenes in order so for me i i, I was like this is awesome <laughs> now i had now after many years of doing it you know even it got to the point like for me like after because i had been after i did star trek i've done other things so i was probably for 20 years oh. and even then it kind of i got to a point where you know what it's not as fun as it used to be standing <laughs> around here and waiting yeah but when it was star trek it was special you know it was always like i felt like i was going to be part of history or part of something you, you know that was going to be around so yeah the time just everything just went and uh got a lot of acting tips from a lot of uh a lot of people too which was really fun yeah a lot of veterans um speaking of veterans you have an amazing shot here that i have to share and that's with quark and new dax <laughs> mm -hmm. nicole devoir um but he's not in full costume can you explain how that this this shot came about 
Um, you know, we were filming a scene in Quark's bar. Mm -hmm. And so when I went into makeup before the shooting started that morning, uh, Armin Shimmerman was already in the chair. He had been there for like, I got there, I think at 6 a.m. I think oh, he wow. gets got there at like 4.30 or 5 a.m. I mean, and Oof. he had the head on and everything and all the makeup. And, uh, you know, he would wear a jacket. So they didn't put the makeup on his arms. And obviously, you probably heard him say this at other conventions, but how hot that makeup is and how he would sweat in it. Mm -hmm. So that particular... He, he was the one actually orchestrating all the actors to come to meet me. Oh, Arnold wow. Sherman. Yeah, he was like, you got to meet this guy. You got to oh, take a goodness. picture with this guy. You got to do he did. He was the one behind everything the whole oh, time I was there. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that particular picture, which, again, um, you know, when I when I got that picture, you know, somebody from Paramount, or the, or the set or said, you can't put that online. You can't, you know, this is just for you, you know? And mm -hmm. I, of course, that's why they had me back because I never did. But you guys are the first people to ever see that stuff. You yeah. know, I, no one has ever seen that. And uh, he, when he took his jacket off, so that's why his hands are orange, but his arms are not. Right. And, and up again. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah you, can you can see it, you know, and, uh, he uh, that's I, we had just done a scene in Quark's bar, I think. And so uh, uh, she yeah. has the, the Ezra has pages stuff. and stuff there. Yeah, yeah. You can see the, the yeah. pages. Um, so, uh, so, that was fun. Yeah. So as a dentist looking at all those gnarly teeth, you know, the Ferengi, the Klingons, <laughs> did part of you just want to go, come here for a second. Yeah. <laughs> so I believe me, I did. I wanted Whoa. to see those teeth and I was like getting like, how does it go on your teeth? You know, make sure you don't damage. Like I'm giving them tips, you know, oh, what wow. to do with their teeth, you know? Yeah. And, um, and of course, yeah, he was wearing fake teeth, but they were, you know, they, a lot of actors would tell me, you know, that I met over the time, you know, they hadn't been successful prior to some of these shows. So they hadn't taken care of their teeth, Oh wow. you know? So that's why I used to get a lot of questions and, and William Shatner calling me, asking me about his teeth and, wow. you know, when people knew I was a dentist, they all wanted to yeah. talk about. They didn't want to talk about Star Trek. They wanted to talk about the teeth. <laughs> I mean, you probably shouldn't say anything. Does anybody have gnarly teeth that you were? <laughs> Did you, you don't um, say who. <laughs> well, just when I was in Iron Man Two, Mickey Rourke had a tooth situation. Oh wow! <laughs> that, uh, they knew I was a dentist, and I'm like, "Here's the makeup guy. You know what are you asking me for?" You yeah. Know? And uh, he had a sharp edge on uh, some one of his. Um, he was wearing these fake gold teeth, but that mm. nothing in Star Trek. Oh, nobody in Star Trek got wild teeth. Um, <laughs> no. One of the shows I, I have to bring this up because my wife loves the show, and that is Supernatural. And you um, got to um, there's uh, some photos that you shared with the the crew there. Oh, you. Must, yeah. I, I guess it's on my Facebook, maybe, I guess. Yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. And that's my that's my daughter, Perry. Oh, there. so you got to bring her on too. That's amazing. And yeah, I got to yes, I did. Yeah. And then my favorite, you got to ride in the car. <laughs> oh God. If I tell you. Oh I mean yeah. I put my sunglasses on. If I tell you what a thrill that was, I was there on the set of Supernatural. Um and um Gosh, I didn't know we were going to talk about that one. Um, it's a great episode uh, with the. It was during the season with I think it's season six with the four mm -hmm. horsemen of death, and I think right. the pestilence was the horseman in that episode. Um, but I was waiting to get into costume. That what I was wearing was in that in those pictures I had come in, mm -hmm. and um, they actually made me a doctor in the episode. They oh, there you go. Not yeah, a hard I thought it was very very funny. But they said, would you like us to pull the car around? Oh. And they have a few of them. And I'm like, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And give me the keys, please. <laughs> yeah. So that was, again, another set where the people were just, you know. And uh, and I did that. I My daughter was a fan. So that's why I, mm. I had done that originally. But um, that was, that was uh, great. And Mark Shepard, who 
played Crowley was in that episode too. And yeah. He's, he, yeah. He's been in a lot. So that, that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I, I just recently started watching Monk again because the movie's coming out and Mark Shepard was a villain in that in early seasons. <laughs> So he, yeah, he's he, fabulous. He is. He is. And I'm glad he's recovering from his uh his health issues. Um I've got to jump into Star Trek Voyager because you got okay. to hang out uh with probably the coolest guy that didn't find anything in space, and that is <laughs> Tim Must. <laughs> uh oh. I love this star shot with you and he and with the uh with the ears. <laughs> yeah, I mean again. Where are you going to get to meet your favorite actors right. in the gear, in the yeah. ears, you know? Yeah. Um, Voyager was fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had, oh, God, what a what a great time that was. I had met Garrett Wang previously when I was doing Deep Space Nine, so he knew me. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, everybody kind of warned me in nicely that kate mulgrew is very intense when she's working oh and i was not one to go up and ask for photos or autographs i don't think i ever asked for anything you know mm -hmm. i mean people would come up to me i mean i when i'm there i'm professional mm -hmm. you know and um and so the director of that episode, Allison Liddy, had seen me come onto the set. I hadn't been in my outfit yet. I guess she thought I, because I do dress nice when I come to the set. So mm. I guess she thought I was an executive or something. She was asking <laughs> me for directions. So this was one of Allison Liddy's first episodes. She's become a very big television director over the years. You could see her on almost every show that you watch. But mm -hmm. when I came on, she was like laughing. She goes, Oh, you're, you're cast. And so she wanted me to be the pilot of Voyager. She decided I was going to fly the ship. And um, what happened, I, I did send you a picture of me sitting in the captain's chair, but that's not from that. Okay. What happens in in that episode is uh, Paris, the Borg capture uh, Paris, Robert Beltran, they're, they're captured at the beginning of the episode. So mm -hmm. the, the pilot seat was open. So she said, I, I'm going to have you pilot Voyager for your scenes and i was like oh this is so cool <laughs> so i was doing it and then she said but she realized i wasn't going to be in the shot uh -huh. so she filmed whatever she was filming and i sat there but she said you're not no one's going to see you so um she came up there was a scene with jerry ryan where i had a hand or a pad and exchange a few things and then i was going to work the controls behind her station so she really uh she wanted again this is another one but she gave me a copy of the script at the end of the shoot, the director, Allison Liddy, and she's mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, she signs it, definitely keep your day job. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Definitely keep your day job. That's great. But the, but the people, the all the cast would give Kate Mulgrew a kind of a hard time. So we come back from lunch and we're doing a scene, and Allison Liddy really wanted to have it where the camera was going to move a certain way. And all of the cast members start doing the scene. The lines were perfect. Kate Mulgrew was like, it's the Borg. And we actually were under attack and we had to do the Star Trek oh, shake. Oh, you got to do the... I got to do the shake, oh, you know, and everything. Yeah. And the cast members start doing their lines in cowboy accents. <laughs> and it was... I, I, I didn't laugh because I'm like, and Kate Mogru did not like it. She's like, oh. come on, guys, we, 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 you know, we got to get out of here tonight or whatever. And yeah. of course, then they went back and they did everything perfectly, you know, and so we all right. got out. But they really gave Kate Mulgrew, you know, That's a really hard time. And in that and in that shot where uh, Tuvok uh, is is there, um, he's wearing like no pants in that. <laughs> 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 that's amazing yeah I mean, yeah they, they would just kid around he goes i'm behind here no one sees me below the waist so yeah you know might as well be comfortable yeah exactly so yeah. i mean i i got to see that was a very uh a, a fun set and sounds Kate like Mulgrew was Kate Mulgrew was super nice but she was working really really hard to get you know she really took it what she was doing super seriously yeah you know, I, I have to give her a lot of credit for that absolutely Absolutely. Uh, and here's you in the chair. 
That is, uh, that's fun. also from Deep Space Nine. As oh, you can okay. see, my neck is a little unzipped. Yeah, that's uh, one of the shuttles. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 runabouts. One, one of the runabouts, yes, yes. yes. And, uh, and so, then, the, yeah, I, I, I had, I, I got the run of the place. Yeah. They, they, they let like. me, they, they let me do things. They said, we've never let anybody do this because they actually would have security oh, outside wow. the sets. Mm -hmm. uh, cause they just, no one, if you weren't on the show, you weren't allowed in there, no matter who you were. Oh, wow. And so, um, a lot of the stuff they kind of let me do like during lunch or whatever, they would normally turn the lights off or turn things off but they kept things powered up just so I could go around and take pictures and they, they oh man, just super nice people. Yeah. Living the dream, living the dream. And then we've got you with Balana. Yeah. That's yep. another very casual shot. See, I'm, I'm looking a little, I'm looking a little cooler at that point. I'm yeah. I guess you got comfortable. Like, you're used to it. At yeah, a little point. more comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I actually, I actually took that picture to a convention Mm. And she signed it for me to, oh. I think she said to Dr. Novick, the best dentist in the galaxy or something. Oh, that's <laughs> I have it somewhere. Yeah. That's <laughs> even more Klingon teeth you could work on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going, jumping back to New Space Nine, there's a, a great picture mm -hmm. of you with everybody's favorite bar rat, Morn. Morn. Yes. That's an, uh, you know, that picture, I mean, literally, it, it's again, super rare. Yeah, super rare. You never see a little bit of a little bit of trivia on that picture because Morn is in every Deep Space Nine episode. Yep, I guess what you what you know. Um, I can't think of his name, Mark William. What, whoever played that. Mm -hmm. The funny thing is, he also because no one ever saw him out of the Morn thing. Right. He also played a, a atmosphere <clears throat> sometimes on Voyager. Oh wow! And so the uniform i'm wearing on voyager was his oh I'm the same size that's cool <laughs> yeah it's kind that's of a little very cool so you and, that is you a and very Morin. rare picture of more in part in and part out of it yeah uh, pickup yeah you and Warren are like this you're wearing the same clothes we are. <laughs> we are definitely like this yeah so there's yeah. a couple of shots that i'd like to pull up and uh this one was I guess other that, background actors or, or stunt. Doubles? Yes, exactly. Mm. Yeah, uh, they call they call them atmosphere. Atmosphere. They don't okay. call, I know. I learned that. Not extra. Not, it's mm -hmm. not even background. They call them atmosphere. That's what they call. You, you know, you're called on the set. But yeah, that's uh, Voyager. Um, right. And a lot of those guys were in many many of the episodes. Oh. Because wow. that's how they were on on Star Trek. If they liked you, they had you back. That's awesome. Yeah, that's like a close that's, family. That's, it it was it it, yeah. it was a very close family, you know, behind the cameras and in front of the cameras. So yeah, I thought that was kind of a cool cool photo uh, with me and the rest of the atmosphere guys. Yeah, and then this is a great shot too. That is actually from D Space Nine, right? And that is Amy Ray is mm -hmm. her name, mm -hmm. and she was uh, later on. She was also an atmosphere, but she was Kate Mulgrew's double oh. for Voyager for the entire run of Voyager. Oh, wow. uh, you know, if they, you know, if you, what they do is with the bigger with the name actors because they're working so many hours, they would have someone who looks similar, same size, whatever, come out and block out the scene where the standing would be, where the lighting would be. And then when they were ready, they would call Kate Mulgrew out. Oh, wow. And um, I met her on Deep Space Nine, but we had a friendship for, for many years. Uh, I ran into her at conventions. And her husband, David Trotty, was uh, first AD on uh, Deep Space Nine and on Voyager. Oh. And uh, we just be, were friends for many, many years. I mean, I've lost touch with them over time, but um but yeah that's kind of a cool picture too i got a lot of great yeah. pictures you have so amazing really pictures your, your time there is unparalleled you know you're, you're living every star trek nerds dream every star <laughs> trek fans fantasy in person yeah. and and you're you're rubbing not only rubbing elbows with these guys but you're actually like in scenes shooting on set that is awesome yeah it was yeah. It, it all the everything I ever did, you know, I took it very seriously, mm -hmm. but really I was on cloud nine like the whole time. 
Oh, I yeah, mean, it's, uh, I mean, I'm the, I, I can easily say I am the only dentist to have <laughs> ever been in Star Trek and probably maybe ever will be the way things are now. Yeah. Yeah. Things are so, but, uh, but to do it over and over again, um, and to, uh, uh wow. You know, very, very, very lucky. And even being in Boston Legal with William Shatner, I mean, that was uh, that was great as well. Yeah, and then uh, Boston Legal, Legal had Rene Jubinois, I believe, in it as well. Yeah, yes, Ryan, yeah, from Deep Space Nine. Yeah, he, he was. So there was he a was little there. mini reunion for you at that point, I, I assume. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, yeah, a little story. A little story about William Shatner. Mm -hmm. um, again, super super nice guy you know this is many years ago and mm -hmm. um i was in you know he had met me at a convention i had never done anything with him but he I, other actors had introduced me to him because i was backstage maybe at the 40th anniversary can't quite mm -hmm. remember exactly which one it was and so i'm in my dental office i'm working on a patient i'm doing root canal on the patient i'll never forget this and my uh office assistant comes into the room and says dr novick William Shatner's on the phone. And I'm oh. like, William Shatner? I go, it must be his assistant. And she said, no, I, I really think it's actually William Shatner. And they knew I was in Star Trek. So uh, the patient is kind of looking up at me. I had my hands in her mouth. And, and, and uh, yeah, I said, you know what? Why don't you sit up and rinse? Let me go see what this is. So mm -hmm. it was William Shatner. I picked yeah. I go into my office, take the phone, and he actually did have questions about his teeth, you know, something mm -hmm. that he was going through. So I went back in, finished the root canal. I didn't think much of it. I answered all his questions. About a week or so later, I'm at home and the phone rings. And, you know, again, these are not cell phones. This is my home phone ringing. Right. Yeah. Back, yeah. And it was William Shatner. Wow. And he was like calling me to thank me for mm -hmm. the advice that I gave him. And he asked me if I would come and be in Boston legal. And oh, wow. uh, I said, I said, no, <laughs> I said, no, I'm, I'm kind of busy. But if you're ever in Star Trek, the yeah. enterprise enterprise was on at the time. Mm -hmm. I said, I would love to come and be in that. And he said, well, let me tell you something that no one knows and i don't know if you know this i don't know if it became public knowledge afterwards he said you know steve i actually am in negotiations to be in i guess it was season four of enterprise i wrote oh. a two-part episode that i will be the guest star in and i have presented it to them and I'm asking for a lot of money to be oh, in the show. Of course. So I don't know if they're going to say yes. And I was like, well, Enterprise is floundering. You know, it doesn't have the following. You know, the, it's, the reviews aren't as good. I said, having you come on the show would be amazing. It could, right. it could literally save the show. Yeah. And he goes, he goes, if I, he goes, when that happens, you're in it. Oh, there you so go. So I hung up the phone. And then time passed. I couldn't tell you how maybe months passed. I'm at home. William Shatner calls me again. And I and he goes, Steve. They passed. Uh, they were. They're not going to do the two episodes. I'm not going to be in it. He goes, come and be in Boston Legal. And it, it was amazing. Like he like he actually called me, which he didn't even have to do. And I, of course, I'm not going to say no to him at that point. No, of course. And not. Um, and so yeah, he set it up, and I went out, and I was in uh, an episode of Boston Legal uh, with William Shatner. So that was a lot of fun too. But he but. He, I mean, again, this is like one of the biggest iconic actors on the planet. Yeah. Kind of acting like a person. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and uh, and he, I, I couldn't say enough nice things about him. I mean, that's the the beauty of of what you're doing. You got to work with them on a different level than most fans could ever imagine. You know, they're they're calling you for real life needs for teeth and 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 living purposes when you are there to save the day so you're their captain kirk <laughs> <laughs> in, reality. in a way i guess yeah you are absolutely yeah. absolutely i'll have to see what uh mr shatney would say about that <laughs> oh i i think you'd be okay with it 
you can, you can ask him for me. <laughs> but that was uh, but that was fun. Yeah, I was as a fan, I was very excited when he told me he had written that those episodes. Yeah. And uh, and of course, I was very sad that they decided not to do it. I think they that should have been great. Yeah, they really. Well, should've. considering in the finale of Enterprise, they brought some of the next generation right uh, actors yeah. into that controversial, very controversial episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, is there any um, characters or, or aliens that you wanted to play that you never got a chance to? Um, hmm. You know, I, I think I can honestly tell you that I really got to do everything I could have possibly imagined. Oh, that's amazing. I think, um, I think being, you know, I think being there and working so closely with Avery Brooks was amazing. Um, uh, I, I, I think that was like a highlight. That was something I think I had always like dreamed about doing, like working that closely with a Star Trek company. Because when I'm there too, I mean, I know, I, I mean, I, I know what reality is, and I know uh, how to how to separate. suspend. Yeah, yeah, I know how to separate it. You know. But also, um, you know, it, it's kind of like something as a young person, you know, you dream about these sorts of things. Right. So everything I got to do was beyond anything I could have imagined. And so I kind of took it in stride. And even, even when I was in Enterprise, I wasn't as big a fan, per se, of, mm -hmm. let's say, Scott Bakula. Oh. But because I was such a huge, well, I, I liked him, but right, I wasn't right. like a quantum leap guy, let's say. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm a Star Trek guy. And but when I went, I it was like going and being with my family because I knew everybody behind the camera. And right. um, it, 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 them making me an, an, you know, an alien was something I'd always want to do. So I, I have to say, I think I've done everything. I think uh, the only thing I probably never got to do that I would have loved to do uh, was. Uh, probably a, a different show or a different series or a different franchise or something. Mm. But when it came to Star Trek, oh my God. I mean, uh, I've done it. I've done it all. That's you know, as you can tell from the picture. Yeah. yeah. I'm the living proof. Uh, one last photo that I'm going to share. And that is uh, for me, this was the guy I related to in Star Trek. And that is Ciroc Lofton. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. He was very tall. He's yeah. leaning down quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a tall. I, I got to meet him in uh, 57, the STLV 57. And it was, uh, oh, hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. But, um, He's, again, he grew up on the show. Right. You Avery, to... Brooks was, Avery Brooks was embarrassing him constantly on the really? set. Well, really? in, a funny, in a funny way. You know, yeah. like he was his dad. He was yeah. actually acting like his dad, right? You know, making him like behave and stuff. Even when he was big and tall like that, it was kind of funny. Wow! But, so you got to uh, see some of the scalding rock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. Deep Space Nine had such a huge, huge, great uh, cast. I didn't get to you know work with Terry Farrell. That would have been fun too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But she had left the show by that point. But yeah, Sir Rock Lofton. Uh, he is. Uh, he was another. You know. He was just great, yeah, you know, doing it all. Yeah, and it was great watching him grow up during the show from as a little kid mm -hmm. that lost his mom and, you know, the closeness that he has with his father. One of my favorite episodes of Deep Space Nine is the one where they go off in the Bajoran um, solar ships. They're like, this, the ships open up and it takes solar radiation and then it makes the ships uh, hit to warp speed. I, I thought them building that together was just an amazing father-son moment. Yeah, Deep Space Nine had so much of that. Um, I I was such a huge fan of uh, Deep Space Nine when I did it. I mean, I obviously I love the original series. You know, that's right. my series. You know, mm -hmm. I, I watched that as a kid. Um, and Next Generation, you know, I loved it, but not every episode. Some of them was it, it and i and i see you know and looking back on next generation a lot of things that i ended up liking looking back on it but i was more of a next generation like when they did the movie first contact mm. that's the kind of next generation that i loved or nemesis like the the more the darker right stuff. like i kind of liked like that i love um, nemesis 
I love that stuff. Yeah. And um, so when I got to be on Deep Space Nine, like that was like, I love Deep Space Nine. And they were doing everything. It was Star Trek, but it was like different in a great way. So to me, that was that was it. That was that was the best until I did Voyager. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And that was the best. Um, I just want to take a moment to thank you so much for joining us uh, in the Capitol Squadron. I'm so glad to Trek Long Island for giving us the opportunity to meet and allowing you to come on the show. It has been an amazing experience to hear your experiences in the various Star Trek shows and even in Supernatural. So that's uh, living the dream. You got to drive the the car. (laughs) So... uh, you retired from dentistry, uh, but have you given up on acting? Are you retired from the acting part? Or are you still out there? Yes, yes. Oh. I, I acting was a hobby, you mm-hmm. know, that I was doing because I ran my own dental practice, and right. it was it was a dream of mine that I, you know, it, it's kind of like how Star Trek is. It, it's it's kind of like what you're doing, Joe, right now, like you're doing this podcast you're living out part of a dream that you have you're putting all your heart and all your energy into it and a lot of people don't do that they think about it and they don't do it and you're sitting here you're doing it because this is something you love but it takes a lot of your time a lot of your energy you do it for love and when i became a dentist that was something i had always wanted to do be a doctor but when it came to acting that was a fantasy that was a dream Right. And I put that effort in, I put that work in, you know, like, and I, I encourage people to try their dreams, you know, to try that. And I think that's part of the message of Star Trek in a lot of ways. Maybe that helped me to figure that out. I, I don't know. Maybe. But um, I, I, after doing that for about 20 years, because again, I, I've done Star Trek. I've, uh, like I said, I was an Iron Man too. I've been in other shows like Oz and, uh, Frasier, di- a lot of different things I've done over the years. And uh, after about 20 years of that, I kind of, it became more work. Yeah. And I kind of said, you know, I've done everything. I'm going to end on a high note. I think I was, the last thing I ever did was I was in the, the Avengers, the first, oh. su- the first Avengers superhero yeah. movie right. that, with, uh, that was directed by Joss Whedon. That was the last thing I ever did. And, uh, and then I did dentistry for 40 years. Yeah. And, um, you know, now I'm living the dream. Um, you know, I've gotten to this point in my life, this age, which, you know, is a miracle. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, I have my great wife, Michelle. Uh, she supports me, uh, you know, in everything I do. I have great friends like my best friend, Brian. Okay. He's, I, I have every, I've done everything I can imagine in this lifetime. You know, my kids, my patients, and now I got to do this with you. It just keeps getting better. (laughs) I really appreciate that, Steve. It's true. I mean it. That means the world to me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Steve, again, we really appreciate everything and your willingness to share so many great memories in the Star Trek universe beyond what everybody and that's watching this could ever imagine. I'm sure there's going to be some questions uh, from the audience once we put this out. So if I do, we'll probably try to put it up on social media. If that's okay with you. Of and course. yeah, and I'll reach out. So again, thank you so much. And thank you guys for checking us out, hanging out with us for this hour, talking to the great Dr. Steve. We had a blast. I'm sure you did too. So if you, do us a favor, like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. You can get more stories like that with Steve and a lot more coming for 2025 and for the rest of the year. We're going to be back in the Agony booth this Friday live at 9 p.m. It's going to be a lot of fun going. We do the uh, a look back on the uh, harder to watch episodes, those filler episodes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. It. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And we'll see you then. Live long and prosper. <laughs>